John, how are you doing today? I'm very, hey. very good after yesterday. Very yes. good today. I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yesterday, for anybody that is wondering, we are recording this, the official day post-promotion celebration. Uh, it has been secured. We have John today from Zebra Customs, or as the Americans say, Zebra Customs. Um, <laughs> You know, hopefully we haven't offended you too bad in the oh. past. No <laughs> problem. In the end, you want it to be old, that's, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and if and people know who it is, that's, that's the main thing. Yeah, as long as you get paid, that's uh, that's the important <laughs> part. <laughs> we we have SJ, uh, as everybody knows, uh, Sarah Jane, and she just generously brushed off her desk, so we know her mic is working oh. uh, 100%. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, this man. Is, it's like, I'm sorry, John. It's, <laughs> it's all right. It's, <laughs> we, we, I call her out for something that means nothing um, at least once per mm. episode. Yeah. Uh, there's no weight. There's no bearing on it at all. But the most important thing is we have a wonderful guest here who has been doing the, the boots, the artistic design for many a players and many of our favorite players, for the people that aren't familiar with you or with your work, who is John? Okay, so John is the owner of Zebra Customs. We started off as just a small project during COVID, but has just sort of grown into that I'm so passionate about now. It's like probably, I'd say like family and stuff is like the biggest part of my life. I would say, because it brings me so much, like, joy, I guess, let's say. Um, yep. Yeah. I just, oh, I are just, you... Sorry, go on. What you were saying, uh, family, um, What? Who's who are those important family members in oh, your life? Mum and dad, brothers, sisters, uh, my girlfriend, my dog, who will probably <laughs> make, possibly make an appearance, because he's been rattling up Yay. the... So, yeah, I'll let him in, maybe. <laughs> we're, uh, we're big pet fans yep. i actually have a, a quick question about that because uh i watched you one of your um like some little clip on um x and then uh you had a big tank in the background big like tank. a reptile tank oh, or something yeah. uh, what, what do you got my dad's uh well my dad and sister have a snake uh corn nice it's huge we've had it out a couple of times yeah she's lovely she's great nice that's yeah. cool. What kind of snake is it? A corn, corn snake it is. So oh, like, corn snake. Ooh. Yeah. She's pretty big. So, They're pretty. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, well, it, that's right in line with uh, last week we were talking about herping. So <laughs> yes, that's yes. exactly in line with that. Uh, so we have another fellow uh, herper here mm. today. Um, what what Are they all reptiles that you guys have, uh, or is that just one snake is the one off? They've got the, they've got the snake. Um, I think my sister was like uh, at one stage in her life. She was like, oh yeah, I really want a snake, so they got one. And uh, yeah, she just she's just been there in the background. She she lives where my dad's house, sort of where my office is. So if I'm ever bored, I look into the tank and just watch it doing a thing. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, I mean, outside of the scary fact, if you look in, the snake's not there. Uh, I mean, I I might have the irrational fear. I don't. Corn snakes aren't venomous, but uh, I'm sure they could bite, right? Oh. They could still uh, yeah. yeah, pack a punch. Yeah. So, so I interrupted you uh, about the family, but you were going into who is is John? Um, what? How did you? You you said you got into it during uh, COVID, but mm. obviously, like the art form, the creativity was already there. You know, it's so developed to where it is now that it wouldn't have, it couldn't have possibly just started. Mm. I've always been interested in drawing, to be honest, like painting. My mom was really big on art when she was younger, and I've sort of probably taken it a little bit from her. But I kind of went towards like like Japanese manga type drawings, like mm. stuff. Like I started with so that was where the interest really came in and then I'd had a few conversations with an old college tutor of mine and we'd spoke about because I didn't really know what I wanted to do with myself I was around 23 24 didn't really know what to do and he was like oh why don't you I think it was initially he spoke about like selling just selling shoes you know like people were at resell shoes and stuff but I was like mm. I said well, what about painting shoes painting, like making designs so then uh, I think COVID hit didn't it 
and I was sitting in the house and we had literally nothing to do so I was like well I might as well try and do something so I did some research and then I don't know if you're familiar with a, a guy I don't know where he's from Dylan De Jesus. so it's De Jesus, uh, De Jesus Systems. he's mm. probably like the, the one of the top guys out in the states for he provides NFL players with like plates and stuff and like I saw some of his work and I was just like right I got a, this is this is something I need to try and pursue so I reached out to him he was actually so helpful and then I kind of just built it from there so it was just baby steps and now it's you know it's it's not life changing yet but I have um you know I have high aspirations for that yeah you mentioned manga um favorite manga um so I I, I don't actually read the manga because I I love what of the animation on the t- um, One Piece is probably my favorite. One Piece, okay. Have you seen Blue Lock? Yeah. That the football anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that right? I haven't no, but I heard it's like really good. It's like insane. Yeah, it's uh, pretty good. I won't say anything to ruin it if you yeah. if you check it out. So yeah, you definitely if you have the time. I think One Piece is the mainstream one. I think ones that maybe are a little bit off radar. There's one called Samurai Shampoo and okay. Our boy beat pop as well. Both oh, very yeah, s- yeah, both, yeah. Both very similar art styles, but I like the kind of the grittiness of it, I'd say. It's really, yeah, just really great to watch. Would it, If you had your own set of custom, and I don't know, maybe you do, of your own boots that you make for yourself, mm. what would the theme be on that boot? Um, Probably one piece. One piece? I okay. Make, I could probably rock a piece, one piece boots, I think. It depends. But yeah, probably one piece. <laughs> hey, or would you do that for? I don't know because you, you have a good fashion sense. Would you do that uh, as like a one piece on some like Nike Dunks or something like that? Would you? Oh, so I've actually I've done a couple. I've, I've actually got. I'll actually bring. I'll come. I'll go and get it in a minute. I've got a denim okay. jacket, a couple of denim jackets that I painted designs on the back of. Um, I'd like to do like some stuff on jeans and stuff because it's literally the possibilities are endless. It doesn't it doesn't stop for like boots and shoes, you know. Um, but no, I've done a pair. I did a, a pair of Naruto Air Force Ones for myself once. Oh, okay. They were pretty. Good. I'll see if I can find them. Actually, they should be here somewhere. Um, nice. I'll get them out for you. Yeah, that w- that would be the unsuspected twist. The M Night Shyamalan twist of this interview is yeah. we ended up getting. Uh, the MTV Cribs tour of uh, Zebra <laughs> Customs <laughs> artwork and gallery. I um, I know that um, SJ was looking into like your custom work early on, um, may- maybe even before I saw your name mentioned mm. um, yet. Um, SJ, what what was uh, one of the top things that you wanted to, to ask John? Well, you were talking about manga and... I'm not super familiar with like what that um, covers under the umbrella, but for like anime stuff, um, I saw Hayden's boots that yeah. you did with the oh, they're freak, oh, they're so amazing, like exquisite. The detailing in it, um, my partner was like, "Oh, that's Pokemon or something." And I was like, Arr. "But um, yeah, but they're they're like beautiful." Um, and I was just curious, like, um, what kind of oh, there's the cat. Uh, what kind of art style progression that you maybe you've had? Like, uh, I've noticed some of the um, earlier boots you did had like maybe more like wording or writing on them. Um, but is there, have you noticed like a progression in detail or style? Like how is your, um, how's this like style evolved? So the biggest, I would say obstacle is that with the nature of football being a contact sport and it's played in all different weathers and conditions, the artwork can be compromised. So the biggest mm. and most frustrating obstacle is trying to make the boots durable because the first pair of boots that I did for Paul that was the first pair of boots that I had played on at a professional level was a pair of Paul Patrol boots for his son Albie they were they came out amazing I was so happy with them he loved them like his reaction to them was like really great like I got a bit for that it was amazing but then he played in them and the artwork started to peel off and then I was like oh my god this is so frustrating because I worked so hard on them it took me hours and then it started to come off so then I was like, right, okay, now I need to figure out how to get the artwork down, but it needs to last as well. Because it will never last forever. 
but it needed to last longer than obviously that created a whole new sort of self I guess nice um and then like do the players pick the, like or do they bring you boots and they're like this is the one I want done or is there kind of some kind of conversation and then you pick them up and because uh, I, I thought at the beginning they were some gifts you were doing, but I can't imagine you're doing it for free all the time. So, so with it's kind of like 50 50. It was kind of like it started off as asking. They asked me and, that, and then it was kind of like I would approach certain players and be like, would you be interested? They're like, yeah. And then we sort it out. A lot of the times I don't charge the lads because I kind of see it as, especially, let's say, especially Paul, for example. Paul's now got, he's sitting at like 200,000 followers or something. So if I, I, he's an athlete and Nike are paying him to make, to, for them to wear their boots. Nice. Same for me, except I'm not paying him, he's just wearing them and I'm making them for him. So I'm, you know, I'm happy to do that. It's helped me out massively and, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for it. So. So nice. I look at that. Obviously, in the long run, you know, when I get to a, a, a certain level, then obviously people, I probably won't try to charge Rex and players, to be honest, just out of just generosity, maybe, and just gratefulness that they helped me get to this point. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I, if, if I could have, me, like, some kind of present that um, the player's going to wear all the time, like, even if it wasn't kind of trying to promote something, like, or get a business off the ground, like, I would just be like, oh, my gosh, they, have, you know, just yeah, that, be so that, excited just as okay. a fan. No, I'm going to advocate for you, John. Uh, John <laughs> might say he'll never charge any Wrexham players, but I'll say Wrexham players, um, hook them up, hook them up, <laughs> show show some love yeah. for, the, <laughs> for the hard work. I know that there's a give and take between, like, the free uh, – I guess not free, but the press and promotion that you get out of it, uh, mm -hmm. it, there there is a benefit. But also too, it's like all great art deserves uh, a certain yeah. valuation to it. And so, like the hard work that you put into it, the creativity that you put into it, uh, the you mentioned the durability. Uh, Without giving away the trade secrets, mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that you can say kind of in the process of how you can make something last a little longer instead of just like that one game or yeah. two games or whatever it is? So prep is key. That's the main thing. I know pe people don't realize how much work goes into making the boots able to take the mm. – so there's a lot of like – the obviously when the boots come straight out of the factory, they're made – to be worn are not for obviously they get paid them, themselves a lot of the time or the, the designs on them they're made a certain way to make sure that they are durable so I have to kind of strip that down back to like the base layer then add, to, add certain adhesion promoters so that it allows the paint to take to the boots and then cover it with my own protective seal and, and stuff like that so and then with Paul's first pair everything was everything was hand painted sorry my phone just something weird um everything was hand painted on paul's first pair but then i realized that i'm gonna need thinner paint coats so that the paint's so thin that it can't peel off you know okay okay so I, then I, i've got bought an airbrush so i airbrush a lot of layers and then with the fine details i'll use like a toothpick or a really fine detailed brush Ooh. that's how i get the you know those crispy lines i guess wow wow i never would have thought toothpicks for painting that's yeah. an, uh, Dylan De Jesus uh, trick, I guess. So I got to shout him out for that. Nice. So, like, can the players or can you like pick any kind of boot? Like, I know uh, McLean and I think Aconquo had like the new Predators came out, um, and then you know they're like super bright and crazy. But yeah. um, is are those like kind of more? I'm not like a big shoe ish person of like the, you know names and stuff but are, is that like a style issue that would be something you wouldn't do or that's just more complex to do if it has all those kind of colors already so definitely materials a big thing and also surface is a really big thing what i've come to believe again through watching like people that are more experienced than i am is that you want a surface with something that's it can bite onto so something that's not completely smooth <laughs> But then something kind of gets thrown out of proportion where some of my best work has gone on shoes that are really sleek. So it's weird. Like I did a pair for Ben Toza. 
they lasted amazing. They still look great. And then I did another pair for Ben, which I thought, oh, this material will be fine. And then after one game, they were ruined. So Oof. it's so it's like one minute you think you're getting somewhere, and then it just chucks a spanner at you, and you're back to square one. So, but it's you know it's all part of the the process. Trust the process. At nice. the premier level, do players? change uh boots every game is it a is there is there a level where the artwork will only need to be uh like durable for one one match um i imagine like like you say, i guess the, the, the prem, there's a couple of prem players that get stuff done by a guy who is also probably one of the high he's got this formula that you won't share with anybody which i totally mm. understand and he makes like crazy crazy intricate designs so they look amazing, but they don't come off. And he's like tested; they're tried and tested for like a whole season. Like there's a couple of Tottenham players. Uh, Basuma's got some. Um, they're just so good. And I was like, oh my god, this this is like where I need to be. But it's just deep, like having that whatever whatever paints he uses or whatever prep he puts in, like he knows exactly what to do to get it right. So wow. maybe one you, the secret. You need, you need to find out where he lives and then just like go peek in the window. <laughs> Uh, hey, like, what are your secrets in there? I want to say Scat. <laughs> I could be. I could be wrong. I don't know where he's from, but yeah, he puts out some really good stuff. So he's working with a chemist, a material chemist, <laughs> right now, and he's. That's what he said. He's like, <laughs> yeah. Like, Test tubes. Our, our chemists put our paint together. I was like, God, what do these? I can't compete with that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like, yeah, we tested it. It could survive a trip around the sun. You're like, what? What? What am I? What am I supposed to do with that information? You know? uh, well, let I'm, me. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a kind of sideways question here for you: If you could do, and this is another set of boots for yourself, um, mm-hmm. whether they're they're boots for playing or custom shoes for wearing on a every day, what food item? would represent you best on a on a design <laughs> yeah. that's interesting um well i'm scottish i don't know if you've been to scotland before you've been to glasgow i have not okay no, so haven't. in glasgow they have um the staple is horrific you shouldn't be eating this kind of stuff it's, it's it, i think you have one of these things it'll take a couple of weeks off your life so there's a giant pizza box and it's filled with like uh it's filled with chips and like naan bread it's like you know like Indian flatbread, okay. yeah, and donna meat and fried chick like fried Indian style chicken. It's just the greasiest, most horrible thing, but it's so good. But then, if I eat it, I go up to Scotland. If I eat it, it, it like finishes me off for like three days. Like I, my day, <laughs> <laughs> terrible. I can't breathe properly. So it's yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> Is that because, like, you want to eat so much of it you can't breathe, or, like, (laughs) eating it just makes you react? (laughs) Cholesterol goes through the roof. Um, (laughs) His body is literally shutting down. It's it's an (laughs) autoimmune response to poison entering his body that's what it is yeah. i go up to scotland to see my family and stuff like once or twice a year and i'm like oh, i won't have it this time because i know how much it makes me and then like, <laughs> it's, it's why do you lie to yourself <laughs> it's called a, <laughs> do your box just have a look on tiktok or youtube you'll see what the monstrosity of it is it's, yeah okay. <laughs> Okay, what's it called one more time so I can uh, look Munchie it up? Munchie Box. M U N C H I E. And then Box. And it's a Munchie Box? Okay. Maybe because I'm in the US, maybe I have to put in uh, Scotland. Then, well, specifically Glasgow. Okay, let me see here. You gotta like plan oh, an wow. extra day. <clears throat> Just plan an oh. extra day so you can eat. <laughs> and obviously, you guys have super portions, right? We understand. But this is like super portions. And it's like the most unhealthy thing you could probably put in your body. <laughs> yeah, that's an artery clogger. I pulled up a couple of photos of it. It it looks like the perfect drunk food. Yeah, exa- that's exactly what it is. <laughs> drunk, drunken culture. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I was typing in Munchie Box, but we have a fast food chain out here called Jack in the Box. Yeah. And oh. they, they, they have like, they always run like different ads that are kind of like lean into not only the drunk kind of like 
drunk eating, but also the like getting high eating. So they have a lot yeah. of like things that are themed without saying exactly what they're for. So they have a, <laughs> a, a, a munchie box, which like out here, munchies is synony- synonymous with getting high. Yeah, so same. it's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I think I went yeah, so it, to New York last year uh, and I had a Chick-fil-A for the first time and it was amazing. Ooh. My girl, girlfriend loved it as well. You, you had the sandwich, the traditional, like, yeah, original yeah. sandwich? I had the sandwich, yeah. Yeah, like, the chicken nugget things. Cause, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it was really good. We had, like, three, three, we had, like, three times over there. <laughs> they're good. They're good. Yeah, they are. They are good. How, how does that rank? Because for us, like, as a fast food, um, like, chicken sandwich, or would you guys call those chicken sandwiches or chicken yeah. fillets or chicken burger? Yeah, chicken burger, yeah. Chicken burger. Chicken burger. Okay. How does that rank? towards like the best ones that you've had over so, in the uk why is the best chicken burger i've probably had in terms of a fast food place uh i would say comfortably yeah um fast food i think my favorite fast food here five guys is great i think yeah. it's yeah. This really good everyone complains it's too expensive but i think it's really good for the price you're paying for it in my opinion i don't think i've ever had a bad one really um the place called pepe's that i do you would put, okay. uh, it's like nando's Okay. You know, heard of Nando's. I know Nando's, but I don't, Pepe's I haven't heard of. Like a takeaway style Nando's, but the portions are great and it's just it's really good. A lot of people, a lot of people like that. So it's kind of like um, you know when you get the the street vendors. I had some in New York. There was uh, like halal chicken and rice. Mm, yeah. yeah. Oh. Like that sort of thing. I would say that's probably the closest thing I can think of. So nice. Yeah. Good. So you would love. <laughs> Going out to LA and eating the or getting the food truck culture because there's like mm. a ton of food trucks with like specialty items. They might be like a a, a lobster uh, like sandwich of sorts that's just out of yeah. a food truck, but it's delicious and fresh. Yeah, I'm about hundred percent. I think if I didn't do this, I would probably have a stab at like making some sort of food van or something like zebra cup. <laughs> Oh, food yeah. on one side, boots on the other. <laughs> no, no zebra meat. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. or maybe, maybe <laughs> it's could. It, yeah, it could be because we've got that exotic stuff like uh, alligator meat, like gator meat. Yeah. People uh, eat out here. There's some, there's some weird, weird stuff we have. I, there is a, a supermarket here that you can get stuff like that from. I haven't ever done it. But you can get, I think, ostrich and uh, alligator. Oh. I'm pretty sure you can get a kangaroo and stuff like that. So. Oh, wow. Wow. So, yeah. There's a Cajun restaurant here that does alligator bites, and it does it with, like, a little cocktail and horseradish. Um, yeah, it's, like, they're super tasty. I never. Yeah. Oh, you had them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I never would have thought, like, it was something, I don't know, that I would – I would never thought it in my meat family of foods. <laughs> and then uh, this uh, restaurant, it's like kind of more Cajun-ish style. Uh, we went to, at, it was open till like four in the morning. So you could go after the bar and everything. Um, and so we would go there and then some one of my friends would get it constantly. And I was like, all right, take a little bite. And I was like, oh, it's kind of like uh, a seafood chicken nugget. Like it has a mm. little bit more of a chicken like, density than fish. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there it, it's good. I, I just, I never would have thought that I would yeah. be like, Oh yeah. Alligator. I've had that. Yeah. So, but yeah, tasty for sure. Yeah. yeah you put the right <laughs> seasoning on any meat and, uh, yeah. it's going to taste good. <laughs> Cause I definitely had meat that people cooked wrong where you, you oh, know, yeah. you're like, Oh yeah, I like steak. And then you eat it and you're like, I had, do I no. like steak the way that you're making it? I don't think I do. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know you were such a foodie. Uh, so so now as the Americans that come over and we only have so much time uh, when we get to the UK to sample foods, we can go to the regular places that we know, the McDonald's and, and et cetera, mm. and eat, we can eat safe. But where would be some places that visitors should make a stop and eat at i don't know for, for like proper british culture it's hard i would say like you'll get different restaurants and that that are good if, if we were if we were saying strictly wrexham there's a couple of little sort of single chain restaurants that are okay in terms of like on the whole of the uk 
I think you'll get some like good fish and chip places. They're not popular mm. in the U- out in the US, are they? Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's one I, I enjoy cooking as well. So I find a lot of the time I can cook. I don't want to sound like a, an ass, but I can cook better than <laughs> I can eat. So I don't know. It, it just depends on how you feel at the time. But um, and also I gain too much weight, so I have to stop eating. I can eat. Yeah. I can eat. I like Matt. <laughs> I don't know if you know what Matt Stoney is, maybe. Yeah, uh, I do. He's okay. um what maybe. what's his no, his channel is just Matt Stoney, isn't it? Like uh, right. his YouTube channel. That guy is thin though. Mm, he is, yeah. He's thin, but he man, that guy can eat. SJ, yeah. this guy, um, he looks like I don't know, maybe maybe a hundred and like thirty pounds or hundred and forty pounds. And he he can shovel. He goes to like those competitions. He'll like break the challenges. I think he was in the Nathan's hot dog eating contest before. Yeah. Oh, he's 50 like, eggs. He, he beat Joey Chestnut like once. Yeah. And then the whole world, well, the whole competitive eating world went into like meltdown. And they're like, oh my God, <laughs> this guy's kid, eight year old kids come and beat like the, the greatest. <laughs> and he, he does those things where I think he's got banned from a couple of competitions where he goes and it's like, if you eat all of this, it's free. And they're like, no, nah, you can't come back anymore because yeah. <laughs> we, we've given you too much, too much free food. <laughs> but some of the stuff that he eats, it looks absolutely delicious. And you're mm-hmm. like, man, I would I would actually love to stop and, you know, just enjoy the food instead yeah. of inhaling it. Because <laughs> when he's done, he's got the meat sweats. You know, he's completely... <laughs> Like it's a process. You you're putting your body through a lot to try to yeah. to try to eat that much. Yeah. You have to like be born with. You have to. It has to. You have, it has to be something you're born with. I think. It has to be. To be able yeah, to well, put that amount of food in your body. I think like Matt Stone too. It's like he does something where just to get his stomach to expand, he drinks like a gallon what? of water and stuff. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Right, try his stomach. He, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he does do those moves too, where yeah. he does like these stretches and stuff. To yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he shimmies. He shimmies down the food while he's eating. <laughs> Wait. So Jumps John up and down, trying to pack it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he's trying to get the space so he can get a little more. John, if if there was a food competition out there, I don't. Maybe you've thought about it before. Uh, which which one would you join if you had to? Uh, what can I eat a lot of? There's a couple things I. Like Jaffa cakes. Do you have Jaffa cakes in the in the US? No. Okay. What is that? It's so uh, it's like a there was a big debate on whether it was a cake or a biscuit. I think it's more. Of a, <laughs> they come in like little tubes. The Brits love them. The so like okay. the little sponge, kind of like a l- little bit more firm. Uh, oh. Sponge, okay. Okay. Like kind of gel thing in it. So it's like an orange biscuit eat cake thing. But there's a lot of them, and you, you can just eat them and eat them. They're like so Moorish. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Go through quite a few of them, I think. That that are they? Uh, do they balance the salt? Because I was looking at them, they look like they could be just ridiculously sweet with the chocolate, the yeah, orange. The so you, you might need you might need like a salt to balance it. You know, like some oh, some yeah. chips or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I'll I'll try those out. I don't know if we can even get those over no. here. I'll send you some. Do out. you have Do you have a world market down there, Ryan? Yeah, we get a couple. Of, a lot of the times, it's so a lot of the supermarkets do like American sections now. So you'll get like Schneider's. Oh, hang on, the dogs at the door. I'll come. I'll, I'll bring it and say hello. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, Rand, do you have World Market? Do you have one of those stores? Yeah, we we have one. It's pretty far away. There's one by the house, but it closed down. So now I got to go across town to get to one. Uh, because I get my Yorkshire tea there, and they have a huge biscuits section, and they have Jaffa cakes. I haven't, oh, they, had, you've seen I haven't them. had those. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So I haven't tried them, but I've seen them there. Um, and so when we go, then I like pick up a new box. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Cutie fuzzball. Okay. So I'm not good with dog breeds. Is that some type of poodle? It's a poodle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A lot of people mistaken him for a cockapoo. Uh, so like a uh, cocker spaniel and a poodle cross, but no, he's a pure poodle. Pure, pure sass. Uh, I guess. What's his name? I, his name is Jojo. 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 Yeah. <laughs> little, uh, little uh, John, 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 part two, Jojo. <laughs> who? <laughs> so who got to name the dog? Me. It's named after uh, another anime character, but it's a bit conspicuous because I think you can get away with Jojo without it sounding too Japanese. It's like short for like, there's a couple of characters that all the names begin with 
J, and it ends with uh, Joe Star. So Jojo, that's where it's from. Jojo. Well, yeah. What was that? Is the animation? Is it? Is there that anime? Isn't it just called Jojo? Is that one? Yeah. Right. That's jo- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where it's from. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I'm, so we have our first poodle. Yeah. Our first yeah. poodle on the pod. <laughs> The pod tends to be really cat heavy. Um, it is. It is. Have a lot of cats on. It, is that? I think it's the first dog. Is this the first dog you've no, had? No, no, no. We we we've had a couple of dogs uh, before. Um, never a poodle though. That's the first poodle. Okay. And I, uh, poodles are hypoallergenic, aren't they? Yes, like, I'm dogs. That's why I got him. Ah, so, okay. So I, I could survive around that dog then because. Okay. Uh, <laughs> My asthma and allergies, um, I have to enjoy animals from afar, uh, preferably mm. behind a screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Because yep. yep. we had uh, uh, the Ventolin spray one for mm-hmm. years. We have this. It looks like Hubba Bubba. Is that? You know, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. 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 The tubes. Tape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, nice. So, so I have a um, – what I use is like I use the, the spray, yeah. but I have a, a spacer. Uh, oh, if you've okay. ever used those. And yeah. then so you spray it into the spacer and then you breathe all of that in yeah. instead of just spraying it directly like into your mouth. On your um, tongue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you, yeah. then you just have bitter tongue for like a day and everything yeah. tastes weird. But yeah. But yeah you, asthma. Is it all right or do you struggle with it? Um, it depends. Like I try to like right now I've been starting running again. As long as I keep my mm. like fitness up, then it's not a bad thing. But I actually, uh, in COVID, I got COVID and I had to be hospitalized. I was on oxygen. Oh, wow. I, I couldn't speak for like, I couldn't say words um, for maybe almost two months. And uh, wow. so like I was, I was out, out and it led up to, I think what like kind of saved me um, mm. at that time is I was ultra marathon training. And I had just finished a 40 mile run the day before. So my fitness was oh. like my my cardio it, fitness was like pretty good. It still mm. like hit me sideways and I was in a bed for months and uh, it was a slow process. But it was like like how you and covid you got into the art. Uh, I started just like learning how to play piano because since oh. I couldn't oh. like really talk and speak, I would like play piano. Then I started trying to sing along with the songs to also use with the breathing exercises because they gave me that like that one SJ you'll know that what this is it's like that little you breathe into it and you make the ball go up yeah you know like yeah. up into a zone and you try to keep it into that zone for so SJ what's that called I know you know it uh spirometer hey that yeah. sounds exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. correct is what it is yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like it's like this narrow and about that tall it looks like it could be a bookend or something yeah, and then yeah. it's got like a little breathy tube, and there's literally the ball in it that, it's, and it has different um, uh, like pressure settings, which is basically just a little slidey marker that shows like keep the ball at this level, and then so you try to like pace how much breath you let out at once, and like you know it's like keep blowing, keep blowing, like there's, like, there's no air left in there, and so you just kind of yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to get my phone charger because my phone might die. Yeah. Uh, it's two minutes and I'll grab the jackets and the shoes while I go out there. Yes. So I'll be back. Sounds good. Like three minutes. I'll be back. Yep. And then nice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab that little thing too, just so I have a reference. Okay. <laughs> here you go. Here you go. SJ, you ready? Oh, that's like a lot different than the one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But it's the same, same process. The uh, ones we have at work are shape different, but they're the same, same tool. Yeah, maybe maybe mine was the one that my insurance could cover because it's pretty cheap. Yeah, yeah, like, no, uh, we have super cheap ones too. That's an incentive spirometer is the the like I think technical name for it. But yeah, it's the same thing. It's just shape different. Ours are still cheap plastic. <laughs> You know what I've been sneaking in here? Um, not what? since we've been recording, but while right before we were recording, I've been eating these. It, I, it's round. I can't tell anything, but it's round. Bottle caps. Oh, oh nice. I was almost going to guess spree. Those are, do you know the spree? They're like yeah, yeah, yeah. basically like, like a sweet tart, but has a, a mm-hmm. coating on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are like. Bottle caps are the, nice. When you got like Halloween candy, those would be 
uh, oh, like yeah. dropped. <laughs> the, the, um, don't they have like a root beer flavor in there? Yeah, they or, got root beer, cherry, grape, cola, and orange. Nah, I'm not a not a cola root beer fan, but I like the fruit ones. You don't like the sarsaparilla and the and the coca? Uh, I like root beer to drink, like real root beer, not like barks or you know anything that can be on a gun that syrup with water. I don't. I'm not a fan of, but, um, when, uh, but like real brewed root beer, but, um, yeah, root beer, do you flavored drink your candy. real root beer with your pinky up when you're drinking this, um, oh, high, you know what, high the, class you soda? know what that is, is because I'm literally imagining holding onto the neck of the beer bottle. And so the, you know, the top of the beer bottle, mm-hmm. it's not like, they're not like, I don't know, beers, beer bottle or the necks like this tall. They're like shorter. I don't know. Oh, they are? Anyway. They're a little stubby? Maybe like this? Like this kind of stubby? Like that yeah, stubby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because when you would drink opposed- that, you can't get your whole fist around it. Yeah, like like a tall bottle versus the short stubby bottle like that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Weinhardt, Henry Weinhardt's makes a really good root beer. Um, and so that's the, the one in my brain that I think of. There was a pizza place here that had um, root beer on tap, like not... Like the Barks root beer, but like literally like Henry Weinhardt's root beer, um, like by the cask keg. Uh, it was it's like so good. <laughs> so, anyway. Sorry, John. We we were talking no, about root beer. It's fine. It's fine. It started with bottle caps. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and I think root beers. There's a pro. There's a program I used to watch when I was a kid, and I still I still can't remember where it comes from. It said bottle caps for cash a lot in the show. I don't know. It was Ameri- I think it was American, American cartoon. I can't remember what it was. And it bothers me all the time. <laughs> Every time I hear about bottle caps. What's bottle that caps. Called? Yeah, that, I don't know. What they, because that sounds like some type of um, like kind of like box tops where you uh, yeah. you turn them in and then they get redeemed for yeah money or funding you, or whatever. Yeah. Do you have the bottle caps candy there? Uh, bottle caps candy. No, I don't think so. Like yeah, this. It should. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, it, it'd be similar to like, oh, what are they called? They will sell like ones similar in boxes like that. They'll sell similar stuff to that. In, um, like sweet tarts ish kind of. Yeah. I'm just trying to sort my uh, because my charge's in the bottom of my phone and now I can't uh, put my phone up. I might have to go this way. Yeah. Just mm. Um. Do this. Do this. If you um. If you go sideways, do you have your uh, orientation locked on it? Mm, oh, okay. So if I lock it and then turn it sideways, it'll be wait like this. No, it's the same. Um, I'll tell you what. You might, I'll just what I'll do is I'll, I'll just keep charging it for a little bit and then taking it off. Well, you might be able to do it, this. Pro, you might be able to. Standard. You might be able to leave this meeting and then just click right back onto it um, when you have it sideways, so that it comes in the other I mean, direction. I'm, well, then I should be. I should be fine. I should take me through to the end. Though, I'm just, okay, we'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. If we end up uh, talking too much about random foods, then yeah, <laughs> then we'll be in trouble. <laughs> well, okay. So I, I guess um, we won't take up too much of your time. I know SJ was talking to me. She had a a, a couple of of questions. I'll, I'll tee one of them up for SJ about um, Wrexham not being your first team. SJ, what do you want to ask him about that? Oh, I was just, you know, how long till Wrexham is your first team? You know, you're starting to get all invested with uh, so, players and, you know, because you live in Wrexham, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, for me, it's like um, they call them, and this is, like, this is, this is weird. For me, it's like I, I'm a fan of Wrexham now because I'm, 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 I don't like to, because I, I, I used to go when I was a kid. Me, me step dodged to take me to games. Um, because his friend used to play for Wrexham. Uh, bit of a fun fact: uh, he was actually the last player for Wrexham to play for Wales. Oh wow! Steven. So that's, that was pretty cool. So obviously wow. watching play, I was like, "Oh, my dad's friend plays." So it was good. What was his name? Stevie Evans. His name was. He was a centre back. So he was the last player until Paul Mullen, hopefully. But we'll see. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, he was the last player to play for Wales, so we used to go. Uh, we used to sit next to the pl- uh, players' area and watch. I was about probably about like nine or ten at the time. But Rangers Football Club, I don't know if you're familiar with them, Scottish team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're my team. Um, so you know, I've been through some ups and downs with them. 
So I, I don't like to like call I don't like to say, like call myself a Wrexham fan because I don't want to like be a pretender. You know, that's just mm. not something for me. Um, but I'm hundred percent like super invested. Obviously, um, it's hard not to be when I'm with the players quite a lot and I'm going to the games and it's just very um, intoxicating. You know. Like going and experiencing all these crazy moments, it's hard not to become a fan. Let's say. Were, were you at the match yesterday, the Four Screen Rivers match? Yeah. So I barely didn't get. A I ticket. wore my Wrexham, uh, my Wrexham logger shirt for uh, celebration ish. Yeah. Like I was like, I can't actually have a beer, so. <laughs> what a way, you know, like they just destroyed them. But yeah, I was yeah. fortunate. Yeah. Um, I'd given my. So, in, it would be grandmother in the in the in the US, but it's called nine a lot here in there. Okay. In, so my I gave my nine my dad's season tickets, and I was like, well, how am I going to get to the game? Because <laughs> she's been going like <laughs> for weeks, and I thought I can't I can't take this. You know, I'll, I'll <laughs> um, I was like, how am I going to get to the game? But then thankfully, an individual at the club helped me out. I won't name drop in case he gets in trouble, but you know he <laughs> he did me a favor and. I managed to get to the game, so oh, yeah, that's great. cool. It was crazy. Oh. crazy. That yeah. preaches to the celebrity level that you are. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you you have these ends and these connections. I'm sh- pretty sure if you ever had a problem with somebody, all you would have to do is just say it, and we would never hear from that person again. Yeah. Yeah. That well <laughs> mafia connected. <laughs> yeah. <Hopefully we'll- laughs> Bloody. <laughs> Ollie Palmer turning up at somebody's door. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Boyle, you can't come in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got gotta send the enforcer out there. What uh, is as far as your, your background, like getting into art, um where did you, are you formally trained or is it something that you just uh worked on and self taught? Yeah, self-taught for sure. I was just picking up wow. and being interested as a kid and then developing it. I developed it a lot through uni. I had a bit of spare time, so I started to, to draw different things. To be honest, I wouldn't say I'm I'm amazing at it. You know, I'm, I'll be honest. I think there's a lot of better artists than me in the area, but I think it's just the in, where you input it, you know, and like what you do with your set of skills, I guess, mm. if that makes sense. There's a lot of so, people. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it's just I'm doing something that's just completely different that no one else is doing. So yeah, well, so humble, uh, talented, creative, <laughs> um, also cooks. I'm sorry, everybody out there. He does have a partner already. Um, so <laughs> that <laughs> I know, hands off. He's taken. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just I'm nicer to be nice, you know. Better to be that way. I guess. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Would, for sure. But I think like. Not thinking that you are the greatest uh, helps people grow because if you thought whether whatever the discipline is, if you thought you had already made it, then mm-hmm. you yeah. don't have to push that envelope and experiment and try new things, yeah. whether they're designs or materials or or techniques. Um, is there a technique that you're working on right now that's experimental that you're not sure if it's going to work out or not? I recently purchased a sewing machine. So I've been Ooh. itching, like you know, like a hand crank sewing machine. So it's like a okay. So I'm 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 you know I'm stitching things onto things, and yeah, it's it's all a very new process for me. It's very daunting, but I'm enjoying it, and I've seen like what the the potential benefits from it. Like you work with different materials, you can add stuff to boots, you can add stuff to. So that's that's been good. There's a lot been a lot of uh, trial and error with it, but. I've been enjoying it so far. So wow! Man, see, so, I never would have thought of doing like sewing machine shoes. Like mm. I think the creativity of that, and like you know, because you were talking about we're like, well, you know, there's other artists and stuff out there, but um, you know, like there's different mediums too, right? Like people who sketch and people who oil paint or do photography, um, you know, or paint boots. There's there's a uh, like different like they can all be like super high quality and super top notch in of their field but of course they're gonna be different and so i i just really think like you you do have i mean i could see with the art i've seen you done you've done for boots like definitely drawing or painting with that too um 
but yeah, I think like the shoes thing, like that just shows the like extra level of like artistry that you can take something that is abstract, like not a th- like two dimensional and turn it into three dimensional art. Like that's so cool. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Like to, to for when I started with the boots and just shoes to where it is now, it's come such a long way. Um, and yeah, that was just the issue. It was the issue was like I want to be able to put the designs that I'm putting on trainers onto boots because then you can really showcase what you can do. So a lot of the boots I've done have been quite minimal, which is fine. It's all minimalist. It's still, it's still you know, still part of the process. Like Paul, Paul's quite simple. He has like simple stuff. He doesn't go too crazy most of the time. Other than that, Paul Patrol pair really. The Disney pair I did for him recently were really cool. I enjoyed doing them. That was fun. Um, so had a couple of Disney characters on there. The Mickey Mouse Clubhouse gang. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you do trainers too? Like, are those for players? Yeah. Or like, normal nope. people Anybody. get, yeah. like, them done? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> so I had a guy from, um, where was he from? San Francisco. Uh, he, he ordered a pair of uh, 49ers and... Um, 49ers and Golden State Warriors themed uh, gazelles. They were really cool. I enjoyed them. Um, and then Wrexham got promoted, and uh, last year they won the league, and then everyone wanted like league winners, gazelles, on mm. mm. loads of those. Uh, yeah, and I'll probably do the same for this this time. I'll probably have like a back to back promotion pair. I'll probably get them done like maybe next week or something, and then everyone's gonna want some. That'll be fun. So. I saw um, one of my favorite pair. I I think this was yours. Um, They look like, I think, white Adidas. So they had like the three stripes on them. But the um, club crest was kind of painted in the gaps of the stripes. Yeah. Yeah. I have a pair of checkered vans. And Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I want that in the checkers. And then I'm like, that's you know, like trying to get the design to like lay out in checkers. I was like, that's, that's too much. But, um, but like, I, I love the, um, the way you incorporate the, the design of the shoe into mm. the, um, the elements that you're putting on. Like That's the good thing about the Adidas because the stripes do create that, like the breakup. Because I think if you were just to stick the back over the, the white leather and the stripes, it would look a bit funny in my opinion. So I do like the broken up side of it where it becomes, it looks as though it's part of the shoe and it's been made like that. Like that's the key to, to, you know, custom. The most annoying thing that bothers me, and like this is no disrespect to anybody that orders stuff, but everybody always wants to order the same thing. And that defeats mm. the other custom shoe. It's like, it's supposed yeah. to be unique. But I want this one. I said, like, well, why don't you just pick something else a little bit different? Come on. No, I want this one. I was like, well, now I just go, sorry. Everything I make is one for one. You'll have to uh, you'll have to change it up a little bit, you know. So yeah, you trying could to, trying to be you could do early. like a like ice. Uh, what was this vanilla ice? Where uh, you just change one thing. You're like, actually, this is different. Um, oh, because the David Bowie song. A, yeah, I just want red. <laughs> I just want a red. See, his went dun 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 dun. Ours goes dun 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 dun. dun. Yeah, yeah, that's what. <laughs> but, so that's what what, what is different. what's the best shoe then? Uh, if it like you like some of the breakup because you can see that design, but what what is the best shoe to get uh, custom? So the sort of blank canvas Air Force One white Air Force Ones. They're the most popular shoe to work on. The white Jordans are also very good, but the white Jordans I found the material can be a bit funky. I like I've probably worked on white gazelles the most out of everything mm. because there's good like there's good layers on that shoe where. You can create like certain colorways as you've probably seen, you know, with the Rex and ones and, and Robs and stuff like that. But yeah, I enjoy working on Air Force ones and, and gazelles. I'd say I've got an interesting pair to work on soon. Actually, that I'm, they're going to be tricky to work on. It's a boxing shoe. It's a really big shoe. Uh, I've got it here somewhere. So I can grab it in a bit. Um, it's really it's it's for a there's a Scottish MMA fighter who fights in the UFC. Uh, he, he was wearing Harley Palmer's clothing and I messaged oh, really? him and I was a fan of his and I was like oh how come you're wearing I said Do you? And, he, and we spoke and then now he sent me a pair of shoes so that's pretty cool we're going we're gonna to sort something out for him which that's would be cool. nice nice is there like um, so again not a shoe like knowledgeable ish so I have like uh, you said canvas so th- would that be like um, Chucks like Converse 
Would that be yeah. kind of like Converse or Vans? Canvas, you're doing it. Because with canvases, with the paint that I use, you just have, have to add a, um, a fabric medium to it. So it just mm. made the paint more like watery, let's say, and it would just absorb into the into the material. So it was almost like dyeing it, I guess. But you don't want it mm. too, that it'll just soak up and completely just cover the shoe. So, yeah, canvas is quite good to work on. Um, I found that, like, synthetic leathers are fine. Synthetic rubbers and stuff is where you start getting a little bit tricky. Because it just doesn't want to take to the to the shoe when you paint on it. Because my my brain is churning. I'm like, what kind of shoes am I going to buy? Because I'm definitely going to ask you to do a pair for me. I'm okay. excited. That's my ulterior motive for getting you Wait, on the what's, pod. Is what's the I just want to rack your brain. What, what well, do you want? It, the theme? Well, Wrexham. Like hmm. the team would be the design. Um, and like I said, I was like, I have checkered uh, vans, and so like my brain. Is like that would be cool, and then you know, doing like tiny squares. I was like, I'm not gonna ask you to do that. So um, I like that um, that peekaboo, like within the stripes and stuff. I don't know. I uh, I don't know. I, li- I like dragons, and uh, that's, that's part of like the um, something that reeled me in to Rexham just on like a cheesy level is like I'm like oh I like dragons and castles and they have those in Wales <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know falls into my aesthetic <laughs> but yeah. um yeah I, I don't know exactly what I would get but uh I definitely um it's in the brain yeah, yeah. of course I'd be more than happy to do it It'd be great that's 50p uh just for talking to him about the design <laughs> so if you want to just go ahead it's and a consultation send that process. over <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. And, I mean, well, it's been tough this year to be fair i've struggled a little bit with motivation at the start of this year um i mm. did aaron hayden's pair they were great they didn't get as much uh response i didn't get as much like pub- publicity spike on social media that i would have wanted from those so it was one of them where i was really happy mm. with that great job i thought this is going to attract maybe some sort of elite players to come in and be like oh this is really didn't really happen so it was a bit like oh okay back to the drawing board we'll we'll see what we can do to fix that which we have absolutely no power over but um (laughs) that's part of the reason why i wanted you on is because like the um the shoes are so cool you know i wanted to like be able to highlight and the hayden ones i can't believe that you didn't get good response i mean they're like so beautiful yeah, I they were, I loved them. And the fact that he's probably not going to wear them, which I was a bit like, yeah. But then I was like, well, that's also a good thing because he's like, oh, they're so nice. I don't want to ruin them. So he's going to put them up somewhere. So I was like, okay, that, well, that's, that's a nice thing in itself, I suppose. Got to yeah. just be like, okay, well, don't wear them on the pitch, but wear them somewhere that welcome to Rex and cameras to them see the- them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, can we see some of them? Uh, you mentioned uh, you were so going to grab a couple. I, I, a pair of shoes I've actually worn, so they're not going to look great, but I have. Uh, but I can show you that they've been worn like multiple times, and the artwork is fine on them. Uh, do you oh, watch yeah. Narrow? Yeah, do you, watch yeah. you do yeah. watch Narrow, so you'll know who this is. Maybe. Oh uh, yes, yes. Uh, nice, so nice. Pick. So they're on a pair of Air Force Black Air Force ones. Uh, these were the third pair I ever made. I think you get a little bit of chipping on the white there, so that would have been white, so that's come off a little bit. Oh, okay, like, okay. Uh, so when with those, like, are you painting the purple and the um, like the uh, yes, part with the yes. sides? Uh, yeah, so nice. the, it would start with the, the night ticks. So obviously, I would have gone purple, and I would have gone with the the Rinnegan on the outside. And then I wanted to add a little bit of like this is actually glow. This actually glows in the dark. This paint. So no uh, way. Oh, nice. Okay. On in purple, neon orange and purple glow in the dark paint on the bottom. And then obviously we've got the the famous quote from the show that I think Rhett and Rand recognise. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we've got also another Naruto character. This is the first denim jacket that I painted. Uh, we've got Shikamaru on the back of a, a jacket. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. That's so, crazy. That's so I cool. Love Shikamaru because he kind of he embodies my kind of view on life. Sometimes it's just Dang, a big that gr- came out good. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Good. And then this one is probably my favorite because Zoro's one of my favorite character. Same sort of thing, but uh, the the sleeping oh. sword. Oh, whoa! So, and then I put like I, blood. Man, the, the detail on that is yeah. amazing. And then I added That's... like a zebra sword, so you wouldn't know. Yeah, help yeah. It was like a, a cool thing to do. So yeah, no, that's probably my favorite one. 
But yeah, I loved like just I mean stuff like that. Wow. Mendy would be interested in this jacket when I showed him because Mendy loves oh. anime. Oh wow, wow! Nice. Yeah. It's yeah that man that is that's quality. That looks. And how long ago did you do those? Um, well, they've been through the wash a lot of times, so they they stick. I've had that. Yeah, I've had them for over a, over a year now. I think. So wow. I take them for a spin every now and then. So yeah, they're cool. What do you wear love- with that? Like what you've got that on? What's your other fit? Like what can you put together with that? I, I love dungarees. I'm a big dungaree guy. Okay. So. Okay. I wear dungarees sometimes, or maybe like some cargoes or something like that. Maybe like black cargoes. Could you be? Could could it be too much? Could do you do uh, like theme shoes with a themed like jacket or shirt or something at the yeah, same time? Or I, I could do that. I mean, you should rock your your own stuff, really, shouldn't you? Why yeah, not? Yeah. Every chance you get. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> what I hear you saying, Ran, is that you want uh, head to toe like. Hat, jumpsuit, socks, shoes. Wow. Like, You've that, overestimated my level of coolness. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would no. I would get away with one item at a time. Is what I, <laughs> There's so many like you could do any so that even just thinking now uh, I was thinking earlier on like there's a guy called Jeff Hamilton who's out in the US. I don't know if you're familiar okay. with him. Mm-mm. He uh, he's really famous for making um bespoke jackets for like athletes and like um like artists and stuff he did do you remember the famous photo of kobe i think it was when he won his first championship and he's like hunched over in a dressing room and he's clutching the yeah yeah he's yeah the, yeah and, and they do it in like really solid lighting too yeah he's wearing a jacket that jeff hamilton made and it's like a it's like a big sort of bulky leather jacket but it's got yeah. like lakers themed stuff on it i like the idea of making like a sort of like a flip on that with like wreck some stuff where like a, there's a big image on the back and you can have like patches and stuff sort of bring that kind of influence over here i think some of the players and maybe even like rob and ryan and stuff would like love something like that so this is something that i'll probably tackle in the near future i think definitely rob like that's yeah. a like because yeah. those those he's from that era of a sports fan of where you had those like 90s uh, starter caps and those like uh, the jackets that were um, what do they what do they call them the um, the Letterman style jackets where you have the solid color here with the with the s- separate leather color and then yeah. you put like all the designs over from like like what was it he's, like late eighties nineties hip hop used to yeah, sport a lot of that has, he has that Rexham jacket that's like that. I actually looked at trying to get something in Wrexham that was like a Letterman's jacket. Um, but, of course, that's all, uh, you know, unsanctioned yeah. merch. <laughs> hey, that's fine. That's, like, so cool. I think that ties into the the leather sewing machine thing that I've got. Like, that would some, be something that I would use that for. Like, I'd probably get – either make the patches myself or I'd get patches and then sew them onto, like, jackets and stuff, then – paint my own design on the back i probably like i said once i can get past this sort of artist block that i've got going on at the minute i think then i'll probably look at doing stuff like that i think well if, nice. what do you what do you do what are your steps that you do if you have like that creative block uh that writer's block or artist block what it what's like the things that you normally do that uh, get you out of that rut so no, it's, it depends. At the moment, like I, I can't play football at the moment because well, I can actually. I played football for the first time in like thirteen months last Thursday because I had knee surgery. I had like my Oof. meniscus ACL repaired. So that was That's not fun. Play, playing football for me is like huge, like for my mental health and stuff. Because I just love love to play like so much. Like I think it, specifically like semi competitive, like five a side. Like okay. I wasn't really out for like 11 a side, I think. Maybe it's because I didn't start playing until I was a bit older. I didn't really grasp the um, the like tactical mental side positioning and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I suffer a lot with like anxiety and I worry about like making mistakes and stuff. But then when I play five a side where there's like no pressure, I can express and I'm like 10 times better, you know. Like I play I, I, with, without myself. Like, I don't know. It's, I enjoy doing <laughs> tricky stuff. But not a lot Ooh. of people do things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Ronaldinho and Tarapt and stuff like that. They're like my favorite players. So, do you like, do the bicycle kick? 
Yeah, the well, so yeah, if, if, if it's on, I might hurt my back if I try it now. But yeah, <laughs> like Stephen Flair, the yeah, Scottish, yeah, got Flair in it. Yeah. So we'll we'll, but, we'll have to get you on those like um, what are, what are those YouTubers the that do the the five aside challenges and they um, they go well, they well, F, well there's like F two were the British guys they were the freestylers I don't know if you're familiar with them uh, so there's two guys that were like freestyle footballers and they came together and they started doing videos um, five aside YouTubers I think who they are there's a lot of there's, them there there's a yeah I get there's some I can't remember what their their name is it's like I'm blanking right now but they have sometimes they have like professional players come and yeah. play with them um, in like the tournaments and stuff and uh, yeah. they get they get dirty they get dirty mm-hmm. there's some like uh, some pretty rowdy one, games it could be uh, the side men that they played in like a YouTube charity match out in Dubai and Ooh. Kaka played and then one of the YouTubers like clattered Kaka back and then everyone like what the hell is this guy doing like his like, he could have broke his leg like and like oh crazy yeah that's that's unnecessary no room for he could have could have got mullined yeah <laughs> yeah well, yeah well but Mullen, but mullen's turn around the scene has been nuts like, that's just a tip yeah. who he is like he's you know he's wonderful the, yeah, the and, thought that he could get the golden boot for the league after missing so many matches because he's third right now uh and i think with I, so langstaff's first and i can't remember who's second but um Langstaff, i believe mullen now has 23 three, after yeah. you could be second yeah. i'm not sure how the ladder i thought it was got. langstaff 26 mullen 23 um that, right yeah and yeah, there was a that's on 22 or 23 i don't know um but yeah mullen could if he fills his boots against um crew then it comes down to the stockball game, and if even if they can't win, I have a point to prove. So I, I 100% have full faith in him to go and do it. So nice. Well, uh, it, we. Oh, sorry, sorry, SJ. I was going to oh, ask. I was, was yeah, going to do a transition, gonna, but you ask in the same st- vein the that we're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 I was going to. Yeah. See, um, do, are you able to get tickets to the crew match? Um, I, I'm covering for a, the guy that I work with, my like senior supervisor. He's like a huge Wrexham fan, him and his lad. Uh, I'm going to cover his shift so he can go. Um, because he's, you know, he's been a fan since day dot and, you know, I can't take that away from him. So, you know, wow, that's class. That is, uh, that's a top man right there. (laughs) Again, again, he has a partner, uh, this gem of a human, uh, (laughs) For for any of the the local viewers in Wrexham that were like, oh yeah, there's a there's a there's a great guy in Wrexham over here, <laughs> a Scottish to to beat to boot. But um, <laughs> before we jump out of here, uh, we should talk a little bit about Wrexham and the season. We have two games left, <laughs> and we've secured promotion. Uh, I'm also using we for you because we are not from Wrexham, uh, but we are very passionate uh, like yeah. you. So, you know, like I, I, I'm, I'm invested now, aren't I? So, yeah, um, yeah. I, it's a very small part. But. <laughs> so, so I, crew. I, oh, I, was, I think I saw a stat. I could be wrong. That um, So Stockport are playing Knotts County. I think they only have two matches left. They're playing uh, Knotts County and then us. So Stop it's not. Three left. Oh, yeah, Stockport have three. Have three. Mm-hmm. Have a game so, because I was, if Knotts County could do us a solid uh, for you know camaraderie from last year and take out Stockport and we beat them and then they lose to somebody else, like we would, we would win the league. <laughs> so I'm, I'm Accrington still Stanley's the other team. So <laughs> Accrington Stanley, <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So, um, oh, then, yeah, yeah. What do you What do you have on crew for uh, for this this game? Are, are, do you Do you do predictions? Are you so bold to do I, that? I'm not super heavily invested with the other teams. I'll be. I'm not going to come out here and be like, "Oh yeah, this guy scored 12 goals and got 13 assists this season." I don't. I don't. Pretend, I, they're, they're doing. They're fighting for the playoff spots, aren't they? Yeah. So they, be, you know, they're going to be up for it. It really depends on where Wrexham's heads are at, I suppose. I imagine with the professionalism throughout the club, they're going to want to keep going. Um, 
in the event of Stockport slipping up because the Notts County game is not going to be easy. We know that. They're not playing great, but um, and then it's just that Atkinson Stanley game, really. Uh, if they win that, then it's... But I think the game at the end of the season, regardless of where it leaves, um, regardless of if there's a league title on the line or not, I think Wrexham are still going to want to prove a point. Of course they are. And Mullen's going to want to get goals. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. So that was a 10 to 1 uh, versus crew prediction from John. So <laughs> very bold, very bold right there. Mullen, no, Mullen, Mullen will get a trick. There we go. Yeah, Mullen, Mullen hat trick. We talked last time, and I was calling. So my prediction for the game was seven nil with a hat trick from Mullen, eight nil if he got a four bagger. I've been told that um, it's called a haul, not a, a oh. four bagger if he score four goals. Okay, that's I, I, I wouldn't. I, that's the first I've heard of it, but I'm not going to question it. So, um, but. Since I was so close last time on if Mullen would have got the hat trick, it would have been seven nil. Yeah. Um, so, so technically, I think I wasn't exactly wrong. Oh, yeah, you were, um, the, you were the thereabouts. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so I'm going to piggyback off of John's uh, ten to one prediction. <laughs> and <laughs> but, but no, um, well, that I, I hope we I hope we do win. No matter what, we're going up. We're going to yeah. to League One. Um, what are some things that we need to do in either the off season, the rest of the season, to make sure that we are prepared for League One this time? So I think you'll see it. Right, it could go either way. I imagine they're going to make, going to make signings, oh, quite a lot of signings. You might see a couple of players go out the door, possibly. You might see some of the fan favourites go out the door because they're getting a bit older, sadly. Uh, as quality as they are, I'm thinking about like. Fletch, McLean, uh, the older players with bigger contracts. I don't want to see him go. I don't want to see Arthur go because <laughs> off, off off the field, he's he's great. Like I probably get on with him. Probably one of the best out of all of them. So mm. it'd be sad to see him go fields, but I'd love him to stay. Depends with him. I think uh, it depends on what Arsenal think of him. What they're going to put the price tag at if he's his aspirations are higher ultimately it all depends on him i don't think anyone can begrudge him for aiming high either so it just depends on what he wants to do but yeah i mean they're going to recruit i think they probably should stick with players that are like maybe in the league that know the league mm. uh a lad, a lad from blackburn that tore Wrexham apart when he played in the schmodics i think if he oh, goes yeah. down yeah they'll be looking at him possibly for sure uh, or somebody like him um, yeah, I think they're, they're going to probably recruit within the league, maybe get a couple of maybe loan players out from Championship and possibly Premier League teams, who knows? It really depends. So I think, yeah, I think it'll be a bit of a recruitment because they're going to need to... It's, uh, you, you don't want to count them out. You can't count them out because they could go and do it three times, which would be insane. But I think next you'd be looking realistically at aiming for like a, a late playoff spot maybe. I would say, without sounding too negative. Yeah, <laughs> bare minimum, stay in the league. Bare minimum. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think fine in that sense. But then again, you got some heavy hitters in in the league in League One. I can tell you that. We're gonna yeah. wrap Mullen up for the friendlies and keep him safe. <laughs> they better limit his playing time. Like in July. <laughs> Are you, are you guys going to go to the to the, the tour? Um, in July, the Santa Clara match, the July fourth against Chelsea. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to be in Canada, so oh. I won't be able to uh, make that one. So I'm waiting on the other dates uh, to yeah. see when they are because I'm out in Phoenix, Arizona. So mm -hmm. um, depending on if you're going to like San Diego or to LA. Um, it's not that far from me, so those those ones I can go and do in a weekend and have a like a, a good week out. Funny, hey, that's not how far is not far. <laughs> <laughs> how far? Because, because right, right. That's, one thing, that's one thing that I I think all the the British people have to tip their hat, or the Welsh people. I won't say British because like, the Welsh love to be Welsh, so the Welsh people tip their hat to is that the Americans. I have no concept of how far. How far isn't doesn't even come under no. that. 
not at all. How far, is, how far for you is not far? Because far for for us is about four hours on the train. That's pretty far for us. So well, that's, that's say, a day trip. I'll do that. Yeah, I would say um, <laughs> for here. So when I was over there, and then the like windy roads, and now you know the speed limit thing. But um, <laughs> I think a big reason why uh, Americans have like that more skewed. Um, like time concept for how far stuff is because we have the interstates and they're mm. on a grid across the country and so yeah. um, I-5, Interstate 5 goes from Canada to Mexico all straight down the west coast so if there's a Seattle match which is um, takes maybe it's like 250 miles I think from here but that only takes me like three, three and a half hours to get there. So you said two and a half. I don't. It, you you said two and a half, Miss Speeder. But. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, right. I wanted to I wanted to be more realistic for the pod. But yeah, yeah, I used to live in Seattle, and then um, I grew up in Eugene, which is like a hundred miles south of Portland. So uh, yeah, I can make that drive. or used to in about four and a half hours, which is not recommended. But if you're going at night, it's easier. But <laughs> but uh, yeah. So um, if there's one in Seattle. I would not. We have um, uh, our local team, or not local, but like our major league soccer team is uh, the Timbers, and then the women's league is our uh, team is the Thorns. Um, okay. And so Providence Park, I think it's like twenty five thousand seats, but mm. and so they said they would be on the West Coast, but I'm not sure. If um, I'm sure there is all sorts of demographics that they're like researching and stuff. I can't imagine that they would come to Portland. I don't. But Seattle, I could see like yeah. people in Oregon are used to going to Seattle to see like major shows and stuff. So, yeah, if that's if they're in Seattle, I'm like, Ugh. but otherwise I'm saving my um, saving my. Uh, football ducats up for going to Wrexham uh, mm. on hopefully October. So, oh, nice. You have to yeah. let me know. I'll, uh, I'll be sure to come and, and see you and you both if you come over. That's for sure. Yeah, and you can pick up your shoes. You know, I yeah. know, I know. Yeah. I have yeah. I have a pair of pajamas waiting for me already. Somebody bought some pajamas for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I actually, um, I did, you mentioned keeping a Conquo for next season. And uh, last night I was looking over his stats. Um, his, he's got 15 clean sheets, which mm-hmm. is uh, so like 38% is how many, like of all the matches he's played. Mm. Like that's, that's crazy. Cause that's, I can't do the fraction math, but like, you know, close, 40, close, like, I mean, it's close enough to half the games he's not conceding. Yeah, yeah, over, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I, uh, it, like, and his shots on goal save percentage is 78. Like, mm. he, yeah. yeah. So, and then the keeper we're playing, um, his, uh, he's had eight clean sheets, and his shots uh, save rate is, like, 66%, but he only has, like, 26% clean sheets. So, for crew i'm hoping that'll their home form is better than our away form but our away form recently has been great in the last few matches so um yeah i think it just depends on where their heads are i'm sure they'll be professional and they'll go and do a job like i'm sure again other stuff arthur's gonna want to keep clean sheets he's gonna keep that up he just looks good for him doesn't it so yeah uh, yeah no i think i think they'll be fine i think like i said it's just it'll just be interesting It'll be the Stockport games that people are going to have their eyes on more than anything, I think. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. well, uh, uh, Zebra D. Luffy, um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> D. Luffy? The, is that, the, what's D? <laughs> so, is that Welsh for customs? <laughs> the main character from one and his middle D, and we don't know why. It's very interesting. So... <laughs> Uh, zebra d zebra d customs <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. there you go <laughs> well it was great having you on um hate hate to cut it short because there's so much more that we could talk about uh, hopefully we can 
get you back on again. I'll um, talk more. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, we learned some wonderful things about you. One of them, you love competitive eating. Uh, you, <laughs> you yourself um, are got your name from a competitive zebra or zebra meat eating contest. And that was a great, <laughs> great thing that we got to learn. Um, you also like to die slowly with that squ- Scottish mu- uh, munchie box. Um, it, it is a it is a death of a thousand paper cuts uh, filled with cholesterol. And I <laughs> I salute you for that, good sir. Uh, but it has been absolutely wonderful. I'm glad we got a chance to talk to you. And um, hopefully when we come cool. over. Yeah, yeah thank yeah. you. I'm, I'm, I'm about to. Or we can, like like I said, if you are interested in getting shoes, uh, Sarah, just let me know. And then we can sort of work it around. When you come, you can like pick them up and wear them to the game yeah. and stuff. I was going to ask, too, for people who are watching and, like, want to get in touch with you for shoes, like, what would be the best way? Like, do you, you know, social media or do you have, like, an email or a website? Yes. What Socials work best for me. I think uh, Twitter and Instagram are primarily where I get most of my sort of order requests and stuff. I do operate on Facebook as well. Um, but, yeah, just send me a message. Have a look at the stuff. Um, I, tr- I reply. I tend to reply. No more than a, a day, I would say. Otherwise, I'm sure I'll have you again for that, but hey, ho. Busy. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I try to reply as quickly as I can. Um, I'll use, I can usually do a, a digital mock up if I've got time to show you kind of what the shoe will look like, give you a better idea of sort of where the placement of certain images and stuff would go. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. So everyone out there, get in contact with John. um, Get that custom, not only like shoes, not only boots, but you've got other custom clothing. You've got that embroidery uh, fabric work that is on its way that we can't wait to see. Um, And what what is just the last last question we'll close it out for? What is one design um, that you would never do? Is there a team that you would never... uh, do a design for on a boot or something. <laughs> Mark, your mortal enemy. Interesting, because <laughs> I actually, I actually made a lot of a lot of my orders actually came from the rival team of my Scottish team, which I'm not. Proud. <laughs> I had like fifty pairs from that, and I was like, I was like, Ugh. every time I made them, I was like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> or, so but you can't turn down opportunities like that, you know. I'm, but yeah, I mean, would I guess the pair? Probably not. Not at this point. Like, no. Who are they anyway? They're a Welsh club. <laughs> you go back down the roots. So, <laughs> yeah, probably. I wouldn't do a Chester pair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know. Why, That's why like- burn? Yeah, yeah. It was like that's like anti promotion of business. People are like, oh, that Chester guy you can shake the stink. <laughs> oh wow. I mean, that's what I heard. I heard Chester was stinky. I don't know firsthand. That's just Jeez. a rumor. <laughs> I heard it's a lovely place. Um, <laughs> that, that horrible people. Lovely place. Lovely place. Yeah, horrible. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, um, on on that note, um, nobody from Chester watches this. We don't. It doesn't matter. Uh, no, it, no. Not at all. <laughs> um, for for five points, the last points given away. Uh, who are the Rangers? This is this is for SJ. Who are the Rangers uh, Derby match? Who are their rivals? SJ. Now the keep Ranger? in mind. Yeah, like keep the, in mind. That's your team. The it's Scottish all out team, right? War. There's all out war over this. There's people. People have biggest, lost lives in this. It's a rivalry, bar none. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want anything. Uh, to- I literally know no other Scottish team. Oh, oh. <laughs> there's a team. Team in the NBA also goes by the same name. Mm-hmm. Pronounced in the similar. NBA. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. was. I, I again. <laughs> like, is we're, it an animal? Are they the Grizzlies? <laughs> we're green. They're green. They're green. They're green. Yeah. No, I. Yeah, I. This is the worst for me. I. I don't even know. <laughs> oh, <they're laughs> I don't even know all the teams in the English pyramid. <laughs> they're called Celtic. Oh, Celtic. the the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very Scottish name. Yeah. We don't like Celtic. Yeah, and they're, okay. they, they, it is, it is. You, I'll send you a couple of videos. The rivalry, okay. it's, 
It's saucy. That, that's too. That is just too much for me. I'll be honest. Like for me, it's just the footy, the football, football for me. I don't go into the politics. It's nice having a bit of tooth and bite to games. It makes them more exciting. But when you cross the line of you know killing people, I think that's are they much. in the same town? Isn't there like a Scottish rivalry that is um, like had giant riots in it at it and that, stuff? That'll be that one. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I yeah. didn't know the name of the team, but I've heard of the the riots and the um, <laughs> and the like the two town thing. I think I learned that from Welcome to Wrexham. <laughs> It's them the fact oh. like religious views and stuff, but um, nowadays it's just kind of been bred into like families and stuff. It's like, oh, you hate these people. So, okay, yeah, <laughs> <That's just laughs> yeah. It's a uh, it's a beautiful game, but sometimes can be an ugly sport. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Well, well on I that don't even positive know the Celtics note, exist, so <laughs> 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 they're completely irrelevant. To me. Oh, yeah. Every <laughs> everyone now that you're motivated to be better humans in the world, uh, we've done our job here today. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I have to jump out of here, so I will uh, talk to you all soon. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming for on. Sure. Yeah, sure. I'm a, a definitely going to hit you up. Yes, of course. It's been, a lot, I've, it's been great. You guys are great. It's been a lot. It's very relaxed. Um, you know, I can talk about. I feel like we can talk and have a good time. Whereas the other podcasts have been have been great, but it's been more like super focused. And you're like, right, okay, I don't want to sound like I don't know what I'm talking about here. You know? So, yeah. No. yeah. Is there <laughs> other podcasts people can watch you on that, like, you know, they can um, uh, find out more about? Uh, so Rob Ryan Red uh, did a did a segment with me, which was really uh, well established in the Wrexham area. Uh, Nathan's a great guy. That's who I spoke to. Um, I also went on the me, my wife, and Rex on podcast. Oh yeah, they were super nice guys, I think. And then obviously yeah. you guys are my third, so um, yeah. hopefully news. Nice. Yeah. Well, well, I'm not going to say I'm not going to rank those uh, podcasts, but I would say by people that I will most likely get a beer with, John has been added. Uh, and also because I know he's going to know where the damn good food is afterwards. Yeah. I'm like, look, we've been drinking. Where's the food? Where should we eat? And what should we eat? Yeah. Well, well, I'll hold you. We'll do that when you come over for sure. We'll, we'll yeah. Sort of... Hell nice. yeah. Hell yeah. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much. Like we say every single time, up the down. Up the down. <laughs> thank you, John. Bye.